everybody and welcome to the end channel video blog and today what I want to focus on is Kelvin measurements and what a Kelvin measurement is is when you use Ohm's law and apply it to a single component to determine the resistance of it and what you do is you inject a known current source and then you take a voltage reading and from there you can apply Ohm's law and determine the resistance and it's an awesome amazing circuit because it's really straightforward you can't screw it up but the accuracy of it is ridiculous it's more accurate than most multimeters and it allows you to do really low impedance measurements. For example, wires. Uh, if you put this into your ohmmeter, you're probably not going to actually establish if there is any resistance in this. Even on something like this, a Fluke 289 still won't give you that good of a reading on it. But if you actually use this, you can actually get a really nice measurement using couple meters. So that's why we use this, is because it's high accuracy and we can do those low impedances. So anyways, let's get right into it and actually see how the circuit's designed, and let's take some measurements of these cables. So now just to continue on saying that a multimeter really can't take really low impedance measurements accurately, I got my Fluke 289 and I got it set to ohms, and I just plugged one end of the cable into the positive and one into the negative, and as you can see, it is actually taking a measurement, and it's probably not too far off, but I want to compare it to an actual Kelvin measurement. But now, the 289 has a really cool feature of low impedance. So it's less than 50 ohms. So if we drop it down to that setting, let's see if it actually gives us a nicer resolution on that. And as you can see, it's not really doing well. It's saying that we have negative ohms, and if we have negative ohms, we've just made a lot of money in the future development of electronics. So let's do the Kelvin measurement and actually see what the resistance of this is. Okay, so let's just get right into the circuit. So the Kelvin measurement is just done really simply. All we do is we take a DC power supply, run it into an ammeter, and then from that we run it to the load. Now as you can see there's two resistors here and what they are are the wires. And usually wires we assume have no resistance for electronics, but they actually do. So that's why they're actually shown here. So that way we can actually determine the real resistance of a component. So what we do is we take a volt reading a voltage reading across the load, which in this case will just be our wire today, and that's going to give us the ability to plug it into the formula. So we take our load, and in order to determine it, we determine V load, which is the voltage over the load, divided by the current source, because it's a series circuit, so current will be exact same throughout the circuit. So let's actually see as the circuit performs and see if we can get an accurate reading on the impedance of a wire. Now I really want to stress this point before we get into anything. Before you actually hook this circuit up, Make sure you have a variable DC supply source for measuring wires. And the reason why I'm telling you this is because we're actually going to be shorting out our supply because we're just determining the resistance of a wire. So if you have it up at 30 volts, your actual current going through the circuit could be astronomical. So just be extremely safe and please be cautious of what you're doing. So I paused the video at a certain point just to actually get the two readings simultaneously. And what I determined was I got... 0 0.000397 for the voltage and 0 0.107 for the amps and I plugged that into the formula and I got 0 0.0037 ohms of resistance so that right there is the resistance of the wire so when we have current flowing from our source and going into our circuit it's actually being divided at this node right here some of the current is going into the voltmeter while some of the current is going through the, our load and in this case we can pretty well ignore this and the reason is is the resistance comparison. When we have this resistor, which represents the voltmeter, it's pretty well an infinite resistance source, and we're comparing it to no resistance at all. So in proportion, all the currents can be flowing through here, and nothing will be flowing through here. But in reality, there is numerics to these. And this one right here has about 10 mega ohms of resistance, and we're comparing it to less than 0.1 of an ohm. So as you can tell, all the current it will be flowing through this resistor for all intents and purposes. There will be some here, but it won't really factor in what we're doing here. It's only when you hit the higher sources of impedance that you would have to factor in such things. Well, everybody, that concludes the video of Kelvin Measurements. Hopefully you guys learned something. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to my channel, and have yourselves a great week.